This video is going to be a brief update to the Shimano XT 1x11 drivetrain review that I did. In this video, I'm going to mention something that I forgot to mention in the first video. I'm also going to update something that I said, and I'm going to show a modification that I'm going to try for this drivetrain to lighten up the bike a little bit. So here we go. All right, the first thing that I want to mention is the issue with backpedaling on this. And I've had this issue on my 1x11 drivetrain on the Trance. And by the way, my Trance has pretty much the same drivetrain, just a little bit bigger cog in the back and a little bit smaller front train ring. But I have the same issue. It's actually worse on my, on my trail bike. So let me, uh, let me show what happens here. So once you get up to about the third to last or maybe fourth to last cog, if you were to backpedal, so you're on the trail, maybe you stop somewhere <clears throat> in a steep incline or something or have to backpedal or even just go backwards, uh, it skips back down to a smaller cog. Let's see if I can get it to do it here. Yep, let's go up to the next one. Okay, there we go. So I'm in the second to largest cog and I just backpedaled and dropped down two or three cogs, which can be kind of a problem because uh, if you are not careful, you could mess up your derailleur and your chain. So it's kind of an inherent problem with the 1x11. SRAM's even had this problem, and I've heard of SRAM updating their cassettes. Uh, I can't really verify that, but I've heard of other people saying that they've gotten different cassettes and it worked. It's worked fine. I've heard of people getting the newer SRAM cassettes on the Shimano and it's worked okay. But for the XT 1x11 cassette you know, with this drivetrain, it's kind of an issue. So uh, it's, and I didn't mention it in the first video because I've gotten used to it on my trail bike to where it doesn't even, I don't even think about it now. Um, you know, if you ever do just kind of pedal backwards real, real quick, especially when you're stopped. So you're trying to maybe get your foot in the right position to get going again and just kind of pedal backwards to get that clipped in foot down, uh, you can have the chain skip off. And, and then really the solution is you just kind of pedal forward and it'll go back onto the right cog. But it's just an issue that I wanted to mention that I didn't mention in my first review of this drivetrain. The other thing that I want to mention that I want to kind of correct what I said in the first video review is that when you're shifting to a harder gear or a smaller cog, if you push the thumb lever down here, you can actually go two gears. I said one in the first video, but I can go one, two with the thumb lever down here. Now, if I go the trigger, I can only go one. I don't know if it was an issue with breaking in the shifter, but when I first got this and put it in the stand and even rode it around, I could only go one gear at a time and now it's going two. So I apologize for that, for get, giving any kind of misinformation, but you can go two harder gears with that. Now on this thumb lever that goes to a bigger cog or an easier gear, I can go four. So I'm going to pedal and shift. So one, two, three, four. And that is very helpful when you're riding in a situation and you come around a corner and you've got to go up a steep incline and just dump a bunch of gears. You can go four and get rid of a bunch of gears. On the same token, it's really nice if you come kind of come over a hill and then really want to go into a couple harder gears. Even if you want to go, you know, four, you can just do one, two, and then you've got four gears. So I did two and two, and I dumped four gears. And I actually wouldn't say dump. I, I, I jumped up to four harder gears real quick. And I just got back, by the way, from a trip in the mountains on my trance. And it was the first time I'd ridden a trail bike with the Shimano 1x11. I've ridden a cross-country bike with 1x10. And I'll mention this in my trance review. But I had the perfect range of gears uh, with the 1x11 up in some pretty steep mountains. And the climbs were two miles an hour, heart rate 165, 170, very steep climbs and never felt like I needed uh, an easier gear. So the 1x11, it's, it really works. And this is a really good gear range with what I have on here. So like I said in the first video, on this bike, I went with an 11 40 
and on my trail bike I've got an 1142 and by the way I think Shimano now is coming out with a 46 so a really big gear range that Shimano is coming out with but I can vouch that even for uh, a trail bike application where you don't have a, a dual front chain ring I still had a really nice range of gears now what you do really lack especially on the trail bike with a smaller front chain ring is your top end uh, after about 22 miles an hour I was pretty much getting to where I started to go above my normal cadence uh, but for most trail applications uh, it's totally fine now here's the modification that, that I'm going to try and I got this idea because I was on my local trails and I live in a flat area and w the trails are constantly up and down but nothing real long and nothing extremely steep and I was climbing in the fourth to last cog on this drivetrain which is a 27 and it was a pretty steep incline I'm thinking I could easily get away with a 32 tooth large cassette for my local trails so I picked up a it's this is an Altegra 1132 cassette that I'm going to try and the benefit of this is it's going to be lighter and it's going to give me a tighter gear range so especially when you're on the road if you're riding to the trailhead or on a dirt road sometimes it's you just want to get that perfect gear and when a, with a really wide cassette uh, the gears are more spaced out so it's hard to find that perfect gear so I know this puts me in the category of a weight weenie but I want to try this and if it works I can just use this for my local trails and when I go to a, some place that's more hilly, especially when I go to the mountains, uh, I can just do a five minute uh, cassette swap and put, put back on the 1140. Uh, and, uh, so we're gonna give this a shot. Now the bike right now weighs 23.94. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap this out and we'll weigh it again and see how much this Ultegra 1132 cassette lightens up the bike. So let's try this out. So here's the wheel with the 1140. And there's the wheel with the 1132 installed. Okay, so I've got the cassette obviously on the wheel, and I weighed the wheel before I did the cassette change, and I dropped 0.27 pounds, so over a quarter of a pound with the Altegra cassette. Now I want to mention something that I just learned with this, and you get to learn it right here on my YouTube channel, in case you didn't know, is this little spacer comes on most modern hubs today, and for mountain bikes, for Shimano, you leave this on for 11 speed. So Shimano, with whether it's 10 or 11, you would leave the spacer on. And if you use a SRAM 1 by 11 or, or 11 speed cassette, you would take the spacer out. I actually had to take this out to put the Altaker cassette on. So with the regular Shimano mountain bike cassette, I had the spacer on the hub. And with the Altegra, I had to take it off. So... Uh, it was just too tight. It the lock ring wouldn't engage, and so I took this off. So there you go. What do you know? So let's weigh the bike. It's obviously going to be about a quarter pound lighter, but let me just weigh it and show you. So weighing the whole bike, I actually dropped 0.35 pounds. I don't know why I got a different measurement by just weighing the wheel. So we've dropped 0.35 pounds with running a tighter Altegra cassette. And I'll just show that this thing does shift very well with the Altegra. And then the last part of this video, I'll just report back on how this rides on the trail and on the road with the tighter gear range. So, running through the gears. All right, there we go. We'll take our cassette working well. I'll report back after a ride or two. So after getting in some trail time on the Altegra cassette, I'm gonna call this a success. So much so that I wonder why I haven't thought about this before because it has some really good advantages. One is you lighten up your bike over a quarter of a pound compared to the XT cassette. Also, you get more precise gearing so because the gearing is closer, you can dial in that perfect gear, especially when you're on a more continuous road or dirt road section. That was actually a little bit of a concern to me because on a trail, your elevation fluctuation is a little bit more dramatic. 
I thought maybe I would have to shift twice where I normally with a mountain bike cassette would shift once, but that actually wasn't the case. I was able to find the right gear. The only disadvantage is you obviously lose some of your top end. So with this being a 32 with the largest cog, normally a mountain bike cassette today on a one by system is a 40 or a 42. Now they're getting even bigger with a 46. So you do lose that low end gear range. But if you live in an area that doesn't have sustained climbs more than about 10% grade, you're not going to need it. And why carry around that extra weight when you don't need it? And like I said earlier, I can do a five minute swap of the cassette when I head up to the mountains or head in areas where I think I'm going to need that low end gear range on my one by system. So that's going to wrap up this review, uh, the update to my review of the Shimano XT 1x11 drivetrain. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks for watching.